Welcome, you are on the Dirty Files channel. Today I am here with two files. In the first case, the murder of Summer Thompson, Summer Thompson 7, of Orange Park, Florida, was killed by Jared Harrell. His dismembered body was found in a garbage dump. He disappeared while walking home from school on October 19, 2009. Despite intense search efforts, he could not be found. Her mother, Deanna Thompson, has faced criticism for allowing her children to walk to school alone. The second case is the murder of Anthony Maldonado. Nine-year-old Anthony Maldonado was killed over a video game dispute at a relative's home in Upper Manhattan, New York. On January 1, 2010, police found him with multiple stab wounds. The person was urgently taken to the hospital, where it was announced that he died shortly after arriving at the hospital. Crime should not go unpunished. However, when this is done to defenseless young children, I think the punishment should be greater. And you? Let's start. Jared Harrell is behind bars for the murder of seven-year-old Summer Thompson, whose dismembered body was found in a landfill more than 50 miles from where she was last seen in Orange Park, Florida. On the afternoon of Oct 19, 2009, Summer was walking home in the Grove Park neighborhood from Grove Park Elementary School, where she attended second grade. She was with her siblings and her friends until they got into an argument about an incident that happened earlier. The quarrel prompted Sommer to walk ahead of the group and disappear into a crowd of children on the sidewalk, CNN reported. Her 10-year-old sister and twin brother arrived home about 15 minutes later, but Sommer was nowhere to be found. That's when hundreds of neighbors joined the Thompson family in searching for Sommer. When their efforts were unsuccessful, relatives contacted the Clay County Sheriff's Office and reported Sommer missing. ABC News reported that people in the community started to judge Deanna Thompson, who was a single working mother, for letting her children walk to and from school alone. But according to Florida state policy, her children weren't allowed to ride the school bus because their residence was less than a mile from the school. Deanna said the policy made no sense. You're making my child walk in a jungle of monsters every single day, walking home from school. Our children should be allowed to walk to school without worrying that a monster is going to jump out and steal them and never let them come home. On Oct. 21, 2009, police officers trailed nine municipal garbage trucks from Summer's neighborhood to the Chesser Island Road, landfill in Folston, Georgia. After they rummaged through 225 tons of garbage, they found Summer dead in the middle of the rubbish. She had been dismembered. An officer initially spotted her brown hair and her legs sticking out of the trash. Her body was transported to the medical examiner's office for an autopsy which revealed that Sommer's cause of death was asphyxiation and multiple blunt force injury, according to First Coast News. Several months after Sommer's disappearance and death, Jared Harrell, who was 24 years old at the time, became a suspect in the case. One of Sommer's friends said they last saw her in front of his house on Gano Avenue, where she would often pet a white dog. Police learned through an investigation that Harrell was later kicked out of the house after his roommate found out that he was stealing and had child pornography on his computer, which was handed over to police. Harrell then moved in with his aunt in Meridian, Mississippi, where he was arrested and charged with 29 counts of child pornography in February 2010. He was held in the county jail on a $1 million bond. On April 1, 2010, he received four additional charges, first-degree murder, kidnapping, sexual battery, and lewd and lascivious molestation. In a four-hour recorded interview with detectives, Harrell confessed to kidnapping and murdering Summer. He told investigators that Summer went to his home hoping to pet the dog, but he wasn't outside. He told her that the dog was inside the house and that she could go in and pet him or play with him, according to News 4 Jax. Once he lured Summer inside, he sexually assaulted her before striking her several times on the head and strangling her to death. Harrell then placed Summer's body inside a cooler drove to Village Square Parkway in Fleming Island and threw it in a dumpster. DNA evidence recovered from Summer's remains matched Harrell. When Deanna read the interview, she told reporters that it made her want to scream, but she felt like I had no choice but to read it. Even if I didn't want to, I had no choice. I had no choice because it's so public. That I have to be armed with the right knowledge to go out here in front of people because they are going to come up to me and say, oh, did you read this? Or, oh, did you know this? Deanna went on to say that she was disgusted when she ascertained that Harold told law enforcement officers that he'd plead guilty to killing Summer if they dropped the sexual molestation charges. In one part of that, 
He says his actual words are, I'll eat a murder. I'll eat the murder charge if you guys take away the child porn charge. And I just can't believe that murder is the less of two evils in this situation, Deanna said. On February 3, 2012, Harold pleaded guilty to kidnapping, sexual battery, possession of child pornography, and other sex charges in an unrelated case involving a three-year-old. His guilty plea was part of a plea deal with prosecutors that would waive his right to appeal. He told the judge that he made the agreement to avoid the death penalty, the IB Times reported. At his sentencing on February 3, 2012, Deanna addressed her daughter's killer in court. She said, You're not even a human being, the victim's sister said in court after Harold's plea. Your name is not Jared Harrell. Your name is Monster. She trusted you, but you had to do what you did, and look where it got you. And now you're going to jail, yelled Summer's brother. It is now time to take out the trash. May God have mercy on your sorry soul, Deanna continued. Action News Jax reported that State Attorney Angela Corey said, Our concern was to get justice for Summer, and we feel like we got fairly swift and fairly sure justice. Clay County Circuit Judge Don Lester sentenced Jared Harrell to life in prison without the possibility of parole for murdering Summer. Lester sentenced Harold to no more than 35 years for the child pornography charges. Anthony Maldonado, nine-year-old boy killed during video game dispute while visiting relatives at their home. Anthony Maldonado was a nine-year-old boy who was killed during a video game dispute at a relative's home in Upper Manhattan, New York. At around 3.35 a.m. on Janbor 1, 2010, Officers with the New York Police Department were dispatched to a six-floor apartment at the Ulysses S. Grant houses on LaSalle Street after receiving a 911 call about a stabbing. When they arrived on the scene, they found Anthony, a fourth-grade student at Lindbergh Elementary School in Palisades Park, New Jersey, suffering from multiple stab wounds. Emergency first responders transported him to St. Luke's Hospital, where he was pronounced dead at 4.19 a.m. An autopsy revealed that he sustained several stab wounds to the chest, along with a cut to his face and bruising on his arm, the NY Daily News reported. Police officials said his injuries were an indication that there was a struggle before or during the stabbing. Alejandro Morales, a then 25-year-old family friend with a history of mental illness, was taken to the 26th Precinct Station House for questioning. Morales was then taken to Bellevue Hospital for a mental evaluation. Following a six-hour interrogation, police officials officially charged Morales with Anthony's death and criminal possession of a weapon. Police learned through an investigation that Anthony traveled from New Jersey to Upper Manhattan, New York, to spend the holiday with his mother's family. Just before 3 a.m. on Jan. 1, 2010, Anthony was playing video games with a group of men at his aunt and uncle's apartment, where he had been staying. When they left to get food, Morales stayed behind to continue playing a video game with Anthony. It was a skateboarding game on his new PlayStation system, which he received as a Christmas present. It was during that time that investigators said Morales and Anthony got into a dispute over the game. That's when they believe Morales plunged a knife into the boy's abdomen several times and slashed his face, according to the NY Times. Anthony then knocked on his uncle's bedroom door and said he had been stabbed before collapsing on the floor. Earlier that day, Anthony's mother, Dolores Juela, told reporters that she had previously spoken with her son and everything sounded fine. I can't understand why he kills Saki, my son, Trela said. I don't know why he take my son. He is a little child. In July 2015, a jury deliberated for a little over 24 hours before finding Morales not guilty of murdering Anthony due to mental illness. Morales thought he was a free man, but when his attorney, Fred Sosinski, explained that he was going to be admitted to a hospital for further treatment, he punched him in the face. He suffered a swollen lip and cheek. Sosinski said he was thrilled with the verdict because it further proved his case. And his client's actions follow the verdict and bespeak the degree of volatility and the severity of his mental illness, the NY Post reported. Sosinski said he wasn't going to press charges because I'm confident that this is a result of, as I argued to the jury, a dangerously mentally ill person who needs to be in a secure psychiatric facility, not a state prison.